The overall goal of this procedure is to culture redifferentiated nasal epithelial cells at the air liquid interface. This is accomplished by first obtaining superficial nasal epithelial cells from a human volunteer. The second step is to seed the cells on tissue culture plates and then expand the cells in flasks. Next, the expanded cells are seeded into trans wells and grown to confluency. The final step is to remove the apical tissue culture medium of the confluent cell cultures on the trans wells to establish air-liquid interface culture conditions. Ultimately, cells grown at the air-liquid interface for three to four weeks will redifferentiate into a mucociliary nasal epithelial cell culture, mimicking the phenotype of the nasal epithelium in vivo. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods like culturing bronchial epithelial cells or obtaining commercially available respiratory epithelial cells is the ability of the investigator to set a priori the population from which to sample the nasal epithelial cells. Uh, nasal biopsies are much less invasive than bronchial brush biopsies during a bronchoscopy and therefore diseased populations with moderate to severe disease can be sampled without any significant side effects. While it's important to remember that this technique is very useful for studying the effects of inhaled agents on normal respiratory epithelium, it's also important to remember that these samples come each from a unique genetic complement and this makes them important resources for studying genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis and primary ciliary dyskinesia. Demonstrating the procedure will be Missy Brighton, a technician from my lab.